I recently did a live stream where I shared the new version of my starter site. If you didn't catch that, I'll make sure to put a link down in the description below. But throughout that video, I had people asking about the use of a child theme. So today I decided I would make a video on how to set up a child theme for Generate Press. But before we get started with how to make one, let's talk about why we might wanna make one. When you install a theme like Generate Press, you're actually bringing in a ton of functionality that comes with that theme. Now, over time, you might realize that you wanna make some tweaks to the way that theme behaves, and a child theme is a great way to do this. For example, I wanna bring in my own design system, or tweak the way the login system works, or even the design of the login page. However, if you just made these changes directly to your theme, anytime Generate Press pushed out an update, it would override all of your changes, and you'd have to start over again. That's where a child theme comes in. A child theme is kind of like a sub theme to your parent theme. A child theme inherits all the things its parent theme gives them, but it has the autonomy to add some things on top of it that won't get overridden by updates. Now, if you're just getting started with WordPress, this probably doesn't seem that important, but as you use it more and more, chances are you're gonna find some things that you wanna tweak about its default behavior. Now you can make these changes with a plugin like Code Snippets or WP Codebox, and I use Code Snippets for quite a long time but I've actually ditched those plugins in favor of a child theme for three major reasons. The first is performance and security. Now, when you upload these plugins, they're gonna have functionality built in that you're probably never gonna use. And some people even argue that using these plugins is a security vulnerability. Now, I can't speak to all that with great authority, but I do know the more plugins you add to your website, the more chances you have of things going wrong. So as a general rule of thumb, I say less is more. The second reason I opt for a child theme is because of portability. It's really easy to take your child theme and import it into any WordPress website you ever use. You could do this with the code snippet plugins, but I just think the workflow of using a child theme makes this a little bit more portable. And the last reason really comes down to branding. By using a child theme, you can actually inject some of your own branding into your client's website. By this, what I mean is we can customize the name of the theme to use something with our agency or even upload a thumbnail that uses our agency's branding. Some people even like to customize these things directly for their client. Either way, you can really brand the way your theme looks when you use a child theme, and that's something that you don't necessarily get with the code snippet type plugins. In the end, there's really no downside to using a child theme, even if you never add anything to it. However, if you go ahead and use a regular theme in the first place and wanna add a child theme later, that can become a little bit difficult. Because of that, I'd rather just start websites out using a child theme from the beginning, whether I'm ever gonna use it or not. And thankfully, setting up a bare bones child theme is actually pretty simple to do. I'm gonna go ahead and show you where you can download a blank copy of a child theme and get started right away. So let's go ahead and dive in and take a look. If you wanna get started quickly with the least amount of work, Generate Press actually provides us with a blank child theme you can download. These files are simple to create on your own, but downloading the blank child theme saves time and it really is as bare bones as you could get. I'll leave a link down in the video description and we'll go ahead and download a copy of this theme for ourselves so we can get started on our own project. With the child theme downloaded, all we have to do is upload and activate the blank child theme and we're good to go. But remember, we have to have the parent theme installed, so you'll want to go ahead and install the Generate Press theme from the repo. Of course, you have to remember this blank child theme really doesn't do anything except set us up with the ability to be able to make those customizations later. Just to show you what the default child theme looks like, we'll go ahead and install and activate it and take a look. We'll go to Appearance, then Themes, and we'll click the Add New button. Here, we'll go ahead and click Upload Theme, and we'll choose a file. We're gonna go ahead and upload the Generate Press Child theme we just downloaded, and we can hit Install Now. We'll go ahead and hit Activate, and now our child theme is good to go. Hey, I hate to interrupt this video, but I wanted to tell you about a brand new, exclusive, and completely free resource I put together here for my Generate-loving friends on YouTube. It's called the six essential tweaks to a perfect Generate website, and it's the six tweaks that I think are most important to get the best results out of Generate Press and Generate Blocks. If you use the link down in the video description below or go to the adminbar.com forward slash generate, I'll give you instant access to all the code, insight to what I'm using it for, and a full video walkthrough. All right, now let's jump back into the video. The blank child theme does come with some defaults. So here you'll see a default thumbnail. We'll see that it's been named Generate Press Child and it has the creator's author name. But we're gonna go ahead and customize all this to make this match all of our own. But before we do that, I think it's important to dive in and take a look at the anatomy of a child theme and see what all files go into creating one. 
With this, I think you'll have a better understanding of how child themes work. If we go ahead and unzip this child theme we downloaded and open up the folder, you'll see that there's three files inside. There's a functions.php file, there's a style.css file, and a screenshot.png file. Each of these files have their own purpose, so let's talk about each one of them individually. We'll go ahead and open up this functions.php file. Here on my machine, it's gonna open up in VS Code, which is free and my code editor of choice, but you could even open up this file in a simple notepad app. Inside of this file, you're gonna see the opening PHP tag and then a comment from Generate Press giving you instructions about the PHP file. The important thing to note here is the comment that says, only edit this file if you have direct access to it on your server. The reason this is critical is that if you add some PHP with errors in it into this file, you could easily break your website. A common error that you'll see is what we call the white screen of death. When that happens, you'll have to access your website from the server level to fix issues as your ability to log in from the front end is completely lost. The functions.php file is the most advanced of the three, but this is where you can add PHP code to your theme to change the behavior of your site. Just as an example, in my starter site, I have PHP snippets that add a user role, modify the UI, and add functionality that otherwise isn't native to WordPress. Here later in this demo, I'll show you how we can add some code snippets into this file and change some of the default behavior of WordPress. The style.css file is a little less intimidating in the fact that you're gonna be much less likely to break your website by making changes to it, However, it does come with some defaults that you're likely gonna to wanna to modify. Inside the style.css file, you'll see the theme header, like the theme name, the description, and information about its source. Some of these things will be visible to people who log into your site, even if they don't dig into the code. Later, I'm gonna show you how you can customize all of these things, but for now, I just want you to know that you can customize any of this without issues, except for this line that says template. This is your link to the parent theme of Generate Press any changes to this and you're gonna break that connection and your child theme is no longer gonna work. Now, besides the theme header, there's other things you might wanna to add to your style.css file, namely any of your custom CSS. I like to put my finalized CSS in here instead of the customizer. This gives me the ability to use the customizer as I'm testing things out and benefit from the live preview, but have the style.css file where all my finalized code lives and can be organized really neatly. Lastly, there's the screenshot.png file. The screenshot for your theme needs to have both the proper dimensions and the proper file name. Because of that, I find it easiest to just open up the screenshot.png file that comes in the blank child theme and make my modifications directly to that original file. This way we can just save over it and we know that the name and the size are all correct. Next, we're gonna go ahead and start customizing all of these things inside of our child theme so we can make it unique. In fact, let's just start here with this image as an easy win. We'll go ahead and open up this image inside of our image editing software. I use Photoshop, so that's what we'll use here, but anything that allows you to edit a image will work just fine. Instead of this default generate press logo, I'm gonna go ahead and change this out to show my company's branding. The first thing I wanna do is add a background color that matches my company's colors. I'll go ahead and add this primary navy blue color. Next, we'll go ahead and import a copy of my logo. I'll go here to place embedded, and inside my downloads file, I have the copy of my logo saved. We'll go ahead and resize this here to something appropriate. And just like that, we have a screenshot that's more customized to our brand. Here, I'll go ahead and save a copy of this. I'm gonna save it right over the top of our screenshot.png file, just to make sure that the name and dimensions are all exactly as they were. We can go ahead and replace this here. And if we open up the file that contains all of our theme stuff, we can see this screenshot.png has been updated to the screenshot that we just created inside Photoshop. Next, let's go ahead and open up our style.css file and make some customizations to it. Here, I'm gonna to wanna to customize everything inside the theme header, again, except for that template line, which is the connection to our parent theme, Generate Press. So here for theme name, instead of Generate Press Child, I'm gonna call this Ogle Theme. Here for the theme URI, I'm gonna change this from Generate Press's website to my agency's website. For the description, I'll just say a custom theme for Generate Press. And for the author, I can go ahead and replace Tom's name with my name since I am the author of this child theme. We also have the ability to link here to our website for the author. I'm gonna link that to my personal website. 
Again, we'll leave the template line just as it is, and I'm gonna change this version to 1.0 instead of 0.1. Now that we've changed the theme header, what else can we do to our child theme style sheet? Personally, like I said earlier, I like to use all of my finalized CSS inside the style sheet, but for now, just so we can see how it works in action, let's go ahead and add a simple rule that will make the entire background of our website orange. To do that, I'm just gonna target the body and I'm gonna say background color, and I'm gonna give it the value of orange. With that in place, we'll go ahead and save this style.css file, and we'll move next to our functions.php file. If you don't have any PHP snippets to add, that's totally fine. For a very long time, I just left this PHP file blank, and it's gonna work just fine like that. However, let's take a look at an example of how we could use our PHP file to tweak our child theme. You've probably noticed that the admin bar greets us by saying the word howdy and then our username. Now as a southerner, I definitely approve of that, but I know a lot of people don't feel that way. Let's go ahead and add a PHP snippet to our child theme that will change the word from howdy to hello. Here inside the PHP file, just underneath the comment, I'm gonna go ahead and paste in my snippet of code to replace howdy with hello, and we'll go ahead and save the file. With all of these files now saved, we just need to zip up our child theme folder and install it onto our website. I'm gonna go ahead and go back a level here and I'm gonna change the name of this folder. So we'll rename this and I'll just call it ogle underscore theme. From here, I can right click this and I can say compress ogle theme, which will give me a zip file. This is what we can install into our website. So back here on our website, again, under appearance themes, I'm gonna go to add new, upload theme, choose file. I'm gonna go into the folder where I've saved this ogle theme and I'm gonna go ahead and upload the zip file. We'll go ahead and hit install now and we'll activate it. Now, if we did everything correctly, we should see all the changes we put in place. You can see already that we are seeing the thumbnail we created for our theme thumbnail. And if we click on theme details, we can see the new name, the new version number, and we can see me as the author, as well as the description. On the front end of the website, the CSS we added has changed the body of the website to orange. And we can see now that the word howdy has been replaced with the words hello. So everything we put into our child theme is now working here as we've installed it. Now, chances are you're not gonna set up everything for your child theme in the very beginning and then never touch it again. This is something that you're gonna wanna edit on an ongoing basis. So let's talk about how we can make edits to this as our website evolves. The easiest way to do this is through the theme file editor that's built right into WordPress. From the back end of your website, you can hover over appearance and then click theme file editor. Here you'll see we have our style.css file and our function.php file, which we can edit directly from the back end of our website. Now, while this is the easiest way, a lot of people feel that having the theme file editor enabled is too risky, and they likely disable this using their functions.php file. Again, security isn't my specialty, so I'll leave that up to you to research and make a decision on your own. But let's talk about some of the other ways you can modify your child theme. Another option would be to keep a copy of your child theme on your machine. This way you can open up the files just like we did before, make edits and re-upload them to your installation. This works great, but you have to be really good about version control. I found that this can be hard to keep up with and I run the risk of uploading an older copy or overriding changes I've made inside the theme file editor. The other option is to FTP into your website and edit your theme files directly. To do this, you're gonna need an FTP client. I use FileZilla and it gives you the ability to connect to your website's server. From there, you can open the files from your server on your machine, make the changes and upload them back to your server. This process is pretty safe, but some people finding using an FTP client a bit cumbersome. You'll have to decide which option is best for you, but I'm confident you'll get comfortable with any of these three options with enough practice. If you've never used a child theme before, hopefully this video showed you that it's really not that difficult of a process. Like I said, for me, it just makes more sense to go ahead and put this in place should I ever need it in the future because trying to add that later is a little bit more difficult. Chances are you'll only have to follow this process one time as you set up your child theme for the very first time. After that, you can reuse the same child theme again and again. Like I said, you'll wanna make edits to it, tweak it to your liking, and then save a copy that can be reused on websites going forward. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have questions, use the comments down below. And if you wanna make sure to catch me on the next one, go ahead and hit subscribe and we'll see you there.